www. This short prefix attached to a URL is widely known, but what is behind those three little letters carries punch. Many people have trouble differentiating the internet and the World Wide Web. It basically comes down to this. The internet is the service that connects networks together, a so-called network of networks. The World Wide Web, on the other hand, was invented by Tim Berners-Lee as a program that allows users to easily access content on the internet and uses the internet to allow these transactions to happen. To further flesh out this topic, we must delve deeper into the invention of this seemingly intangible technology. Inventing the World Wide Web involved my growing realization that there was a power in arranging ideas in an unconstrained, web-like way. Tim Berners-Lee The World Wide Web was, as mentioned earlier, the brainchild of Sir Tim Berners-Lee, a scientist working at CERN. CERN houses some of the most advanced and important research projects in the world both then and today. Berners-Lee recognized a problem that the facility was having with the organization of data. His simple solution was to use a universal language that computers could communicate with, TCP IP, and connect it with hypertext to create a navigable service that would allow all the research computers communication. A book whose last page was identical with the first. A book which had the possibility of continuing indefinitely. Jorge Luis Borges. Hypertext, as a concept, is thought to have first emerged in 1941 with a short story by Jorge Luis Borges, The Garden of the Forking Paths. In it, he speaks of a book that is not read linearly. Instead, the reader skips around through different timelines and different perspectives. It was then expanded upon by an engineer known as Vannevar Bush in 1945. He described a device called the Memex, which is very like a modern desktop computer. The Memex contains reels of film that store information that can be accessed at any point. Though the device was never built, it served as an inspiration to Ted Nelson, who implicated the system known as hypertext that whisks the user away to a different location using the blue links that have become so familiar to us today. This is for everyone, Tim Berners-Lee. The first web browser to go along with the World Wide Web was invented in 1990, also by Berners-Lee. What he did next was perhaps one of the most essential elements of the technology becoming as ubiquitous as it is today. The World Wide Web would be free. He established W3C at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and decided that no royalties or patent would be placed on his idea. This allowed for mass adaptation in a way that was never before seen on the internet. Then with the explosion of personal computing, people could use his software to connect with others in a way that was unprecedented. You've got mail. AOL came along and brought the technology to the mainstream in America. And from there, the World Wide Web became universal. The program changed the way that we live our lives forever, and we have the great inventors and out-of-the-box thinkers of the 20th century to thank for it.